and this is Off the Bottom Scooch with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Batman Arkham Asylum DC Direct Harley Quinn Series 1 figure. Pretty much the second in command in terms of the villains in the Batman Arkham Asylum game. And if you are a fan of the Batman Arkham Asylum game, these are easily figures that you're going to want to pick up. As you can see, very nice packaging on here, obviously, with all the other ones. Really cool cowl look here on the actual packaging where, ooh, as I drop it, uh, and you can see, you know, outline here and then these little bits right here are kind of like his ears fantastic figure just I mean, zooming in here that just looks absolutely absolutely amazing dc direct is known for their attention to detail although some of the figures are more kind of like actual statues than anything else this looks fantastic you spin around here on the back obviously you got the other figures that are in the wave you got joker there on the left scarecrow in the back batman there in the center and obviously harley quinn there Batman Arkham Asylum, it's a madhouse, and the lunatics are running the asylum. After arriving on Arkham Island, Batman is greeted by Warden Sharp and security personnel. Although the Joker is securely strapped to his handcart for transfer to the deepest bowels of Arkham, he escapes nonetheless. This is going to be the worst night of Batman's life. With the Joker free, inciting unrest amongst the inmates, Batman faces a riot from a cadre of Gotham City's most wanted killers and psychopaths who are screaming for vengeance and are out for blood. Batman's blood. His mission? Stop the Joker and his accomplices at all costs. Welcome to the asylum. Arkham Asylum. Just an absolutely fantastic figure, and she comes with probably more accessories than anybody else. She comes with a gun and the cane, which, and I'm actually kind of curious to see what her articulation is going to be. This is absolutely, and I know this is actually kind of a weird thing to say, but this is a gorgeous looking figure. She is downright sexy looking. I love the way this looks. So let's get her open and see how cool she actually is. Literally, a fanboy's dream come true. Here we have the Harley Quinn figure opened up and out of her packaging. And I gotta say that this figure is downright sexy. They perfectly captured the look and sex appeal that the actual video game CGI model had. And I know that sounds really ridiculous to say, but this figure is just absolutely gorgeous. Now, everybody that is a fan of Batman and Joker knows the weird, kind of twisted relationship that Harley and the Joker have with one another. Completely blindly, she follows every single order that the Joker barks out. It's revealed in the game that she actually was his psychiatrist at one point in time, who then eventually became madly in love and infatuated with the Joker. Mr. J, as she calls him, recognized this and then in some kind of weird twisted world, fell in love with her as well. But at no point in time does he sacrifice himself for her safety. Joker is always about himself, and we see that in the video game a couple times. Now, in terms of her accessories, she comes with some actually pretty nice ones. All of them actually come with game-specific accessories, this one being, move her off to the side, this one being a gun that is obviously designed to inject the Titan Venom into unsuspecting opponents. Really nice paint job on here. I really like the way that looks. You got a nice green tip right there. The uh, barbershop look, uh, what what I'm assuming is the Titan Venom right in there, and then you got some nice nice silver bits on the uh, side pieces right there. Really kind of cool looking. I like this gun. She also comes with the cane for Warden Sharp, who she eventually in the game takes the cane and beats him with it and ends up breaking the cane over his head, I think it is. Really nice cane itself. I really like the actual coloring on here. You got some nice gold bits here painted throughout the middle. Nice gold tip, and then you got a nice really blue kind of reflective gem here at the very tip really nice looking i really like the way this looks her accessories pretty much are specific in which hand they put them in as you can see this hand is molded to uh, kind of hold the gun except for at least on mine you can't really get her finger all the way in well i guess she kind of can and then she holds it off kind of like that doesn't really look very good but i guess you can do it like that and then the cane just fits in her other hand just like so. Just like all the other Arkham Asylum figures, she also comes with a stand that's very, very plain. Just a black round stand with one peg hole. But on mine, um, as you can kind of see, hopefully, it's got a, you know all these little round bits on here. And this one has one too. And as you can see, it moves. That's where the peg actually is. So it's like 
it's broken or something. I, I don't know entirely. I mean, it sits in there and then you can just peg it into the peg hole on the bottom of her foot. But it's really kind of strange how it goes like that. I, I mean, I'll probably just end up gluing it so that it stays, but it's just weird how that pops out. Now, the overall look of this figure is just bar none, probably one of the best looking sculpts on all four of the first wave figures. When you just look at her face, the paint job, the sculpting detail, everything on it is just absolutely incredible looking. You got some nice rosy cheeks on there, gorgeous, sinister blue eyes, really nice red paint on her lipstick, and then the hair is very nicely detailed. It's so, you just look at it, and she looks so angelic, yet she's so devious and sinister. As you can see she's wearing her little nurse's hat and a little bit of a nurse's outfit coming down. She's obviously got her corset that she's rocking. Really nice how, like, her gloves are opposite colors. You got the blue kind of on, well, bluish purple, then the red on that side. Her skirt with a little midriff action going on here, coming down to the stockings themselves. And then again with the legs, really cool. You got the blue and then you got the red. And the painted detail on here is just exquisite. It's absolutely phenomenal how the paint just strikes these figures and it just sets them off entirely. They're just unbelievable. One thing that is kind of weird, um, I don't even know how I feel about mentioning this, but her skirt is completely separate from the rest of her body. So it, it pops, it, it's it's not even attached in, I mean, obviously she's kind of wearing like a little underwear thing there on the bottom, but uh, there are some scenes in the game where you can actually see a little butt cheek going on. I guess maybe that is designed to kind of emulate that. I don't know, but you kind of pull it down and it, it stays there a whole lot better, but that's kind of a weird ness I, I don't even i don't even know really what to think about that <laughs> it's just weird in terms of her articulation her head's just on this little cut joint that rotates just from left to right it doesn't it's not on a ball joint or anything her arms do move in and out slightly they rotate up and down they rotate at the upper part of the bicep they bend at the elbow and they rotate at the wrist no articulation at the waist but her legs move forward they move back they bend at the knee, and I don't even think that they don't rotate. No, they don't rotate at the knee as far as I can tell, but they bend at the knee. I was actually looking at these. I wasn't sure if the actual legs were going to be articulated at all, and it was really nice to actually see that they absolutely are, and they just really knocked it out of the park with this figure. Uh, the way that her legs are positioned, you know, you do have to kind of, you, you do have to finagle the legs so that she's able to kind of stand you know, a little bit, um, and of course, you know, you do, do do I mean, it's just an absolutely fantastic looking figure. It's hard to pick the best one out of the entire first wave, but this one is probably up there in the top, in the top, out of four figures, she's definitely in the top. I really can't think of anything else to say. It's, it's just absolutely incredible. I'm trying to, I want to see if I can zoom in here and see. He's actually wearing the warden's name tag that you can see right there, and he's got his picture on it. That's really kind of cool, but I mean, this figure is just absolutely incredible, and yeah, like I said, you got, you got to fiddle with the legs a little bit just to kind of, I mean, it's just absolutely awesome how this figure looks. And like I said, I mean, you just take the little peg and I'm probably gonna have to glue this. It's kind of weird, but uh, just stick it in there and kind of push it from both sides. And there's that. And then, I mean, you can take this and you can have her hold it in this hand. And it does kind of work because her finger's down there. So, I mean, that does work, but then you can't really do much with the gun. So it's really up to you how you choose the displayer and have her look in your collection. But overall, again, another fantastic figure in this series that I cannot recommend enough to you. If you are a fan of the game and collecting figures, this figure needs to be added to your collection as soon as as possible. So until next time, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. I'll talk to you later.